First one to score wins. What's going on, everybody? Big Ten Ted coming at you here today for this game preview. Minnesota, Iowa, somebody's got to win the Big Ten West. We'll see. If Wisconsin trips up, one of these two teams could be in prime situation. The winner of this game could be in a prime spot to gobble up the Big Ten West title. Okay, so let's talk about this. This could be a defensive battle, and I think it will be a defensive battle um, in this game. The winner, the, the offense, the offense that runs the ball better is going to win the fall, ball game. And I don't think, I feel very confidently saying that because the passing game of either of these two teams has been average at best um, this season. When you look at Iowa, right, they were number two in the country three to four weeks ago. They were riding Spencer Petras, and now, about a month later, he gets pulled in favor of Padilla in that Northwestern game, and they got ahead 14 to nothing against Northwestern. I believe it was early second quarter, and then they got outscored 12 to three the rest of the way in what a lot of people believe to be the Big Ten's worst team. So, I don't think it matters who you're trotting out there at quarterback. They have some issues. Now, given Tyler Goodson did rush for 141 yards, and he was the main catalyst for Iowa in that game against Northwestern. And good things generally happen when Goodson is running the football effectively. On the other side for Minnesota, Tanner Morgan has just not been able to recreate what he had in 2019. He had two NFL receivers on either side of him, Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman, but you know, he just hasn't got that. 2020, you know, he took a dive in 2021. This team has mostly been a running team, you know, whether it was Ibrahim to start the year and then Trey Potts, and now Bryce Williams is out, and now you're down to Marquise Irving and Kai Thomas, and those are two serviceable backs. Those are two backs that can make things happen in the running game, but... What we saw last week against Illinois, Illinois was able to contain that running game. They were able to get into the pocket in terms of the pass rush and disrupt Tanner Morgan. And that is the formula that Iowa should control C, control V, copy paste um, this week. Stop the run, rush the passer and get in there and hurry the quarterback and maybe get a few sacks as long as you're in there as well. It's not a difficult game plan, right? Minnesota is not going to do anything complex offensively, right? They're going to run the ball straight ahead. They're going to look to get that offensive line with some hardcore downhill blocking. I think one thing we found out last week, it's a really good offensive line, not very good in pass protection. This is an offensive line that wants to block downhill and go man on man, hat on a hat uh, in terms of the running game. Um, if I or if Minnesota can't run the ball, Tanner Morgan's going to have a tough time. Right, Morgan has not been able to prove consistently that he can push the ball down the field in any sort. Right, there's been games this year where they have been downright, I don't like to say awful, but the Bowling Green game and this Illinois game, two teams that are not very good, they had very, very poor performances. Now, they've been able to flip it back, and they've been able to put up a lot of points against some of these teams. Remember, they put up 41 on Northwestern, where Iowa only put up 17. So Minnesota has the ability. I'm not sure Iowa is the game where they're going to break out and have a great offensive performance. Big key for Minnesota is going to be protecting the ball. Whenever you play the Iowa Hawkeyes, right, you look at their games, right? When Iowa forces turnovers, they convert that into points. Okay, we saw it early in the season when they were doing it at an alarming clip. And then all of a sudden, the Purdue game didn't commit a turnover. Wisconsin. Didn't commit a turnover. What happens? Both of those teams uh, beat Iowa and beat them soundly, right? In those games, Iowa only scored seven points each. So if you don't give Iowa the football, they're not going to score a whole lot of points on their own to go the length of the field, and that's the key for Minnesota. Iowa, you gotta you got to start with Tyler Goodson, and you got to figure out who's going to be your quarterback. You know, Padilla and Petrus, not a huge difference. You know, as far as I'm concerned, um, I don't think either quarterback is going to be able to do a great job pushing the ball down the field against this Minnesota defense. The Gophers third in the Big Ten in rushing. So if they can halt and slow down Tyler Goodson in this running game, you got to think Minnesota is going to be able to be there. This is going to be an ugly game like it was for Minnesota last week. They weren't able to win that ugly game. Uh, maybe Minnesota, maybe Iowa can capitalize and force a, two, a couple of turnovers, get enough points 
to win an ugly game. This one's hard. This one, I was breaking this one down, did a little bit more research on this one. I'm like, man, it's a toss up. Um, I, you know, maybe Iowa, because the home field advantage has the advantage in this game, but it's going to be a defensive minded, running the ball type of game out there in Iowa City. I want to hear what you guys think of this one. Gophers, Hawkeyes for the Floyd of Rosedale. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below who you think is going home victorious. I'm Big Ten Ted. Make sure you subscribe for Big Ten football content. We'll see you in the next one.